Do you want me to turn this way? Yeah, just, okay. just kind of stay how you're sitting, but just kind of veer this way, you know? Okay. Like that. Yeah, go ahead. So 6264 Charles, the property was bought by a builder um, who was actually quite experienced. And he built the building in what's called a Second Empire style. So it's fairly elaborately detailed. There's no, there's no question it's, there's an element of risk involved because you have to be able to pull it off. I mean, these, these guys that did this sort of thing back in the day, uh, they are really good at it. You can tell. There must have been just groups of them like crews of them all over the city because we find it everywhere. I would say almost maybe say 80 to 90 percent of the buildings we work on were tuck pointed in the city. Tuck pointing has always been a very secretive trade and most of the people that do tuck pointing were taught by relatives or, or their father. I wouldn't think that there's more than a hundred people tuck pointing. Uh, and of that uh, number, uh, most of those probably aren't tuck pointing full time. A good tuck pointer might do 200, 250 bricks in a day. So, you know, and some facades have a few thousand bricks in the front. So it, it is slow. And again, it's, it's not something that you can do fast. I think the speed I'm tuck pointing at now was the speed I was tuck pointing at 20 years ago. I've worked on a number of other projects where there was a lot of remaining original tuck pointing, but 6264 is the first opportunity where I've worked on a project where we've actually um, recreated the process and applied it over a large surface area of the building. There's definitely some secrets involved in tuck pointing, and of course it's a misused term in Toronto and maybe North America, tuck pointing it itself. Is, is designed to mimic gauged brickwork. The masons who d even did that or, or any tight joint like that, if you ever tried to match their arches, you realize that they were really skilled. Sometimes I find today's bricklayers are very used to doing very fast work. They're paid per brick. Sometimes I think, uh, you know, it might be better if you were maybe a had you been a jeweler or some cake decorator or someone that did very fine work, if you were thinking you wanted to do something else, if you were good at that very fine detail work, you'd probably make a good tuck pointer. The work that we're doing on 6264 includes um, replacement of all the windows because historically they had been replaced previously. So we are actually bringing back the original style of windows, um, repair to the roof and dormers, repair to all of the metal work on the building, um, repair of all of the wood trim, uh, which well, original was actually quite badly deteriorated in many areas. And then most importantly, um, masonry work to the building. That romanticism is hard to, to digest when there's a lot of dust and the work's really grueling and you're in the middle of the winter or it's humid in the summer. But there's moments where you're just sort of sitting there and the sun's out and you really appreciate your job because you're out outside. And, and then you kind of sit back and you realize I'm working on a house that was probably, you know, well over a century old. The effect of this building I think will be surprising to people. Um, the really intense color of not just the brick but then the various colors for the painted trim and the windows is not something we commonly see in Toronto. So I think it's going to catch a lot of people's attention. Up against the backdrop of the condo, I think it, it adds a real 
contrast, and I, I think this is gonna look, look great.